Okay guys, welcome back. Right, so what I wanna do in this video is go through some of the stuff that I've got that really helps me. Now, um, we'll start with filters. Um, right, filters. I tend to use metal filters. So what I've got here is this handy pickle jar. Now, I'm not using the pickle jar to have any um, resin in. I've just got it as a storage unit. But these pickle jars are really good because you can have a little handle and then you can kind of pull this out and you can put your model in this little pickle jar and uh, have that filled with IPA, yeah, which is the cleaner that you use. And you can dunk it in there like that. And you can also very nicely seal it up. So I'm not using it at the moment, but it's something I'm going to use for sure. So I've got sealed that so you can't smell the uh, IPA and you can pour it and it's not going to drip out all over the place. So IPA is the stuff that we will be using to clean our resin prints up with and generally clean surfaces. We use IPA. Now this is 99% IPA, 99.9. Um, so this is by Hexil. This is a really powerful one and uh, it's smelly. It's really smelly. So keep that lid firmly closed. But what I wanted to show you from the pickle jar is my filters because these are the filters that supply and you'd have to keep buying these every time you filter. And I filter a lot because I always clean my vat after each print. So you can get these from Amazon. This is like a mesh, a mesh filter you see the little mesh at the end it's also got this handy rubberized um, tube thing that can actually be pulled out so this is really good for filtering the resin off because I can put this in the top of the bottle have this dump it in there like that and then just pour my vat resin straight through this okay when I finish with these two bits I put them into my little dunker of IPA and I clean them up for the next time and repeat repeat now this saves me buying these which do mount up um, you can see i've not even used these that came with the any cubic so i'll probably throw them away but i'd like to keep them just in case so uh, i don't use them so that's the first a really good buy it can save you money long term so remember you can open your um resin up which is really tight and i can chuck that in the top there and filter it okay so that is my first top thing to buy okay now obviously the pickle jar which we just talked about could be really handy for you guys so you put your little model in there dunk it give it a little thing three minutes put it back out perfect so pickle that's really good pickle um i keep some tissue here now this is normal tissue this is just for cleanup yeah it's just toilet tissue and i just unit use it for cleaning up things like the filter there and all those bits and uh that's handy to have don't use this because it's coarse do not use this on the fep okay it will scratch the surface now i i have used it but what i tend to do is i put some ipa on it and i just dab it like this yeah so i don't go like this because it's coarse if you're going to clean it, you want to get yourself some microfiber um, cleaning cloths, um, such as, let me just find one here. I've got a pack of these. These are microfiber cleaning cloths, you see? And these are deadly smooth. It's a big pack here. Didn't cost much, like four pounds or something. And, you know, you can use them for quite a while. And you can just use that over the FET because it's really, really smooth. So that's a good thing to buy uh, for sure. Now, I've also got some little trays um, down here. I've got some little trays. Let me show you. Um, obviously, I've got lots of USB sticks okay, to put my models onto. 
Uh, but I've got these little trays. Now these are quite handy because you don't want to put it on your nice wooden worktop or your surface. So you can put all your trays and things inside here. You can put things like this in here and you're not going to spread or contaminate any resin anywhere else. And it keeps your um, work surface free of any of the resin going on it. The other thing is the gloves. Now they supply these gloves which are really good but I've bought a pack of really cheap gloves which I'll show you. These are TPE gloves which work fine. They're not, they're not like rubberized like the other ones but they are fine to use and that's here. So I've got a big pack of these and I just pull one of those out. I normally one hand it, I have it on one hand and I just do all my washing with one hand. Sometimes I'll use two. So gloves are essential. IPA, obviously as we talked about, this Hexil, 99%. Uh, you could have 90%, would be fine. And that's for cleanup, that's for all your cleanup. This stuff is really smelly, okay? So also I have these little wipes. These are just pre-injected isopropyl wipes, okay, like you would for um, glasses, yeah? Like any type or brand will do. And these are really good. I use these now and again. Once I've cleaned the FEP up, I'll then open one of these up and I'll just give it a little wipe inside and on the back. And then it just keeps it all nice and clean, okay? That's really important. Now, I'm not talking about preparation of your models because that's something we're gonna talk about when we come on to painting and preparating and curing the model. So I'm not talking about, I'm talking about the things you use to print. Okay, so those are my main things. The other thing that is really important is a big bin. Um, I create quite a lot of mess with my tissue and all my other bits. So I like to have a little kind of rubbish bin so that I don't have to keep throwing them away. And you don't want those cloth like staying around on the surface because it stinks. You know, it starts to really smell. Good ventilation is really important, so make sure your windows are nicely open. And I've got this nice sealed pot where I just basically throw away all of my um, cloths, things that are soaked that I'm not gonna use. When I fill it up, I'll then get rid of it. You know, take it to the refuse and get rid of it there. Now it is a resin base and if you're not using the plant base it's not biodegradable so you need to take it to an actual specialist that gets rid of that stuff. Now this is all full of isopropyl, um, the, uh, the IPA, so I can throw this in the bin, it's fine, you know, there isn't enough resin on there. Um, some people leave it outside for a little bit and then any resin on it cures and then it's fine to throw it away. Okay, once it's actually set. So they are the main bits that I use when I'm printing with this. Now, there are other things I need to tell you about because I have a, um, a way that I prepare the FEP to further eliminate, apart from tightening, further eliminate sticking to the FEP, which is gonna be really interesting for you guys that are having FEP stick problems. So let me just um, show you what I use. Okay guys, what I use is, what I initially used was this three in one oil. I just put three little drips inside the FEP. Let me just bring that out, inside here. And then I used a paintbrush to actually spread it around. So I've got a little paintbrush. Now for me, paintbrushes are brilliant. So I use that and I just spread that over the whole FEP. Now there'll be little dots on there, but don't worry about it. The actual LCD will penetrate it. Um, but now what I looked online was, um, this is all right to use. It worked for me, the three in one oil, multi-purpose oil. Um, but I knew it wasn't the best way of doing it. What I wanted to do was I wanted to get a dry PTFE. Now, Funny enough, I ordered it online and I got it and it's WD-40. Look at this. Yep. And it comes in a spray can. Now I was trying to get uh, one that I could actually, a uh, liquid like this, but they don't do it. I couldn't find it anywhere. So what I ended up doing, because what I wanted to do was I actually wanted to use the paintbrush. I didn't want to spray it because that can go everywhere. That's not 
good. So what I did was I got a little jam jar. I don't know if you can see in there. I actually sprayed it in. So I just opened this little nozzle up here and I open up the jam jar. This is where it goes everywhere. And I just put it against the edge and I just sprayed it. I sprayed it straight in there. Now I can put that away, put that away, put that somewhere safe. And now I have this liquid. So what I do now is I use a little bit of this. I go in here, I touch a little bit in here, and then I spread it over the FEP, the inside of the FEP, inside, not outside, inside. And what that will do is that will form a kind of frictionless layer. And this dry stuff, this, this, PT, this PTFE dry stuff, stays on the FEP for much longer than the three in one oil. So what happens is when it does its first build layer on the base, it then just releases from the FEP really easily and sticks to the build plate. And in fact, before I'd even tightened the FEP, because mine wasn't tight enough to start with, um, I was using this and it was still releasing from the FEP. So now I've tightened it, I also still use this oil, even though I don't probably need to, I still use it as a precaution and it's given me a much higher success on the print than I had before. So this, I would say, this is kind of essential, this oil. I will not ever not use it. Uh, like I told you, after every print, I clean everything. And then the next print, I do it again. I follow the same procedure, which I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you step by step. So that is the main tools that I use. So these paint brushes are really handy. Now, people use metal um, on the build plate. People use metal scrapers. This is what came with the Photon. I think it's brilliant. I love it. I don't need to use anything else. Um, and people use metal ones. And what happens is they actually get, I've got a little bit of scoring. That's, I'll tell you what happened with that later. But, um, with this, it's really good because it actually doesn't scratch the surface of the build plate. Okay. It comes off nice and easily. Now, um, I've sort of told you how I set up my FEP, but I'm going to run through this again because there's a certain thing that I did with the build plate as well. I actually got some wire wool, you know, in dust like um, you use for uh, polishing metal and things. It's wire wool. Just Google wire wool. And um, I rub this over the build plate to make it a little bit more grippy. So I just lightly went over it. You can see I've got some little lines on there. Um, but with that, I'll show you what happened with that. Why I got those lines in there was because I, I couldn't get one of the models off of the build plate. Um, and I'll tell you why. It's like I said, I had a baptism of fire with this. The model I was trying to print supportless without any supports if you don't know what supports are we'll talk about that later but was this little model here now this is a smaller version of her okay but she's got a base and that base was straight onto the build plate with no supports this caused me a massive problem because it was stuck it wouldn't come off and I actually had to get a scalpel under the edge now what I should have done before I printed was I should have done a slight angle on one of the edges, a slight bevel. This way, I could have got this plastic one under that edge to pull it straight off the build plate. So that was my problem, and I wanna tell you about that later. So that's why I've got these kind of like little tiny scratches on here. Um, I just need to polish those back out with some wire wool, and it'll be fine, but, um, you know, like I said, I had pretty much everything you guys have had go wrong, I had go wrong. And we haven't even gotten to exposures yet and those sort of things. So these are the extra bits that I've got that really helped me. Well, you'll actually see me using these in practice. Uh, one last thing I have got, which is really handy, is this little tray. It's got IPA in it. Um, this is a basically a Chinese restaurant takeaway dish. <laughs> all right and what i do with this is really good because i can open the lid up when it's sealed i can open the lid up it's throwable you know you can throw it away because it's well, i've got loads of them from chinese i do like my chinese so um but i can open this up and i it actually fits 
the build plate. So I can get the whole build plate into the IPA and then using the brush here, I just go over with the IPA and I clean it all off. And I bring it out and I clean this and then I remove the model and then I clean this. Again, we're gonna do this. But um, it's really handy. These little pots are really handy. I'm going to buy a Tupperware one, one with a sealed lid like this, because I think this is something I'm gonna use all the time. It really is clean way of working. Uh, you'll notice everything that contains the IPA has got lids on. It's just so that the smell, I'm trying to minimize. I keep this open, as soon as I finish with it, I close the lid. Uh, with any of the rags that got IPA on, I throw into my bucket. Um, so, and then I put the lid on so that I'm minimizing the smell of that IPA because that's the thing that really smells for me. Um, the resin, I'm, I'm okay with that. It dissipates quite quickly when I have the window open. And it's really important that you do have a bit of aeration in your room where you're working. So these are the bits I'm using. So now you know that, I'm going to now um, start to show you, I'm gonna show you how to level the build plate um, and I'm gonna go, run through a process of me printing, okay? And then I'm going to take you into setting stuff up using Chitubox and what you should do to update the firmware on the Photon when you get it. Because it's likely chances are you will not have the right firmware on there. That's the, um, mem on that memory card, that's the actual stuff that runs the Photon S. Okay, so you want to make sure you've got the latest uh, firmware on there and user interface for the Photon S. So I'll be showing you how you update that. Pretty easy. Um, like everything with a photon S. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have a clean up of my deck and we're gonna run through uh, bed leveling and um, and also preparing the FEP ready for print. Then I'm gonna go in and sh uh, take a model in and show you how I set it up. And uh, well, actually just before that, I'm gonna show you how to update the firmware as well. So we'll do all that in the next uh, few lectures.